Hello and welcome to Toneless Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and come as well to day 23 of 25 Days of Tonalism. Today's uh, study is painted after Paul Desiree Trollibert, and I do not know his actual title. If he did actually do a title, I'm referring to it as Landscape. So. And this is, uh, it's a neat little painting. I, I really uh, was looking forward to um, doing this uh, prior to um, starting all these studies. And it came out really nice. Um, I really like uh, Paul Desiree Trulibert. He's one of my, I, he's really growing on me. He's one of, definitely one of my favorite Barbizon painters, no question. And um, a lot of people uh, definitely attach him to Camille Corot. Uh, he was working in that style that Corot basically developed, but in a lot of ways, uh, and I've had some arguments from a um, an art historian friend of mine, but uh, in a lot of ways, he's a stronger painter than Corot. I know that's sacrilege, but uh, you know I have to call it the way I see it. He, he has more prescient color, and his compositional sense is really awesome. Um, in fact, it's his composition that I like the best of all. So um, I'm uh, actually working on a new computer system right now. I've been sitting here trying to get my movie program to work and uh, it looks like I've tracked down the problem to some issues with a USB hub of all things. So uh, you can, um, you know, uh, uh, enjoy this knowing that uh, quite a lot of effort went into it and I'm sorry if there's some background noise I am getting a, it's a bit noisier computer for one and for two it seems like my neighbors have just now decided to start doing some yard work so uh, hopefully my voice is coming through loud and clear and it's not a real issue for you um, now as far as how uh, it's going in the studio it's been uh, touch and go this week um, for one, I like I say, got a new computer system, so I had to take at least one day, uh, one complete day off from the studio to, you know, disentangle my octopus of cables here and uh, start, uh, you know, backing things up and figuring out where I had programs and all sorts of other nonsense like that. Um, and then, of course, uh, as with any new system, there's it's been working pretty well, but there's been a few issues, and uh, you got you know that's that's par for the course. I've been working with computers for well over 20 years now. I started back in '94, uh, um, and um, you know they're uh, definitely easier to configure and set up than they used to be. I mean, it used to be you'd be you know, going through stacks of floppy disks to find drivers and all this stuff. And these days, Windows pretty much just goes out and gets everything for you. So that's pretty cool. Not to mention with the browsers, you know, they know who you are and they, they keep track of all your bookmarks and websites. I'm going to move this microphone a little closer to my mouth, folks, because my neighbor is right next door with his mower. And it's just awesome timing. Thank you, neighbor. Um, Anyway, I, I don't know if you'll even hear it. Uh, you know, when I usually have some background uh, music going anyway, and uh, that kind of obfuscates this and that and the other thing. And um, by the way, all of the background music you hear on all of these uh, videos is my own music, um, which, you know, I'm not doing much of these days as I've been devoting almost all my time to my. Um, career as a visual artist but I love making music and uh, I hope to get back into it again at some point um, when that is going to be I don't know but I have a good backlog of things and uh, the, the best thing about it is copyright free so I don't have to worry about YouTube hassling me and it gives you a little something in the background there so um, anyway getting back to life in the studio um, I, uh, last week, if you recall, I was having a problem with my drawings drawing, uh, and you know, they never really actually, some areas didn't, and I, I attribute it to the fact that I was drawing with the, the, uh, ivory black with a drawing oil 
on top of a instead of a board that was like gessoed it's a um, you know a painting that's got many many layers of paint on it and then a, an additional layer of burnt umber um, and uh, it could be an issue with that drying oil too I don't know you know it's been pretty steady for me but one thing I found is like I was kind of rubbing uh, some of the areas of the black ivory black that had gone matte I was uh, on some small sketches I was doing um, you know I would just rub it down with a little oil and uh, get the uh, you know to even out that mat so I could actually correctly judge the uh, values of the dark areas and um, this when I tried to do this on these larger paintings a lot of my drawing <laughs> started rubbing away uh, uh, not the darkest areas though so basically I just said ah whatever and uh, redid a little bit of that and then just jumped in with my color and everything looks to be sound now um, I've created a a paint film over the top and I, I'm sure it's bonding fine and I think everything's groovy uh, I so I basically did like a 1622 and then an 1824 um, the 1622 is a larger version of a painting I did as an 8x10 that I'm quite fond of. Um, then it came out okay. It needs it needs a little um, obfuscation. It's a bit clearer than uh, with this big scale up in size, you know. That's one of the things. You have lar little th areas that are small on a smaller painting or much bigger on a bigger painting. And, uh, you, you know, I don't really want to fill it with detail. I need to kind of hit it with the side of a brush and put some scrub things in there and uh, maybe maybe I'll do a little glazing with the warm color I have noticed on the burnt umber that um, I haven't uh, wanted to glaze with my black at all and uh, I think that's because overall things are kind of darker and lighter um, the lighter brighter areas appear lighter and brighter because I think when I'm painting on this burnt umber they just they really pop and uh, the dark areas are, you know, they're where they need to be. So hitting them with a, you know, a glaze of black, really, uh, it just doesn't, it's, I haven't tr even tried it. It just, it does, I know it's not going to be a good look, so I haven't been doing it. Um, but I have done a little glazing uh, with, um, on these latest paintings I've done on the burn number, I've done a little glazing with the uh, transparent earth yellow. Um, sometimes the uh, it's nice to uh, give the the lightest areas of paintings a little bit of a gold in the uh, lift, so to speak. And sometimes I add a dot of that permanent orange in there too, uh, as a transparent uh, earth uh, yellow can have a bit of a greenish cast. It's subtle, but you know, like so many yellows, it goes to green with you know, the slightest provocation. Um, anyway, uh, so, and then the other painting I did, 1824, is a, uh, uh, it's another version of a painting I did back in 2011 that was a real landmark painting for me, uh, called By the Brook. Uh, I'd done that at 12 by 16, which for me at the time was just huge, and, um, I had actually struggled back then uh, to get the drawing right and I uh, had to resort to doing some gridding uh, um, with my photo reference to get things but I had no problems like that now I think I've done just so much landscape drawing since that time it wasn't an issue um, and that's looking really good I, I'm really happy with it it's uh, there's a really nice quality in the um, the first version I did uh, that um, you know uh, this this new painting has a different feeling to it but it's it's looking good and you know it's first pass so I've got uh, you know a second pass coming up and that's sitting there in the studio it's waiting for a code of liquid to get some of these um, you know one of the things about the way I've been working uh, lately with this ivory black everything goes matte um, so the day after I painted you can't really even judge what the painting looks like because uh, the, the the difference between the areas of paint that are glossy and the areas of paint that are matte it's it's you know I just have to wait for it to dry to really get a good feel for it but yeah don't worry about that stuff and I, I would run into that back when I was using the chromatic black as well but certainly not as severe ivory black goes super matte um, 
and uh, that's okay you know uh, I'm working with it I like the fact it's ground up bones I think that's cool and uh, so uh, I'm enjoying using it right now and can't say I won't go back to chromatic black oh another thing that happened as I noticed um, you know I'm getting videos prepared for our next series of 25 studies and uh, really nice painting of uh, from John Francis Murphy I noticed when I was doing the uh, video preparation that uh, somebody uh, maybe me had kicked the video camera and you were only seeing like the top quarter actually the one we're doing right today you can see it got the camera got nudged a little bit but we're only missing a little fraction of the top of the painting it's not such a big deal but on this Francis Murphy I was like really bummed about that so I decided to do uh, for you guys uh, a, a, um, a whole new version of that so that I've got good video of it and um, hopefully uh, well uh, I did that back I decided to just keep it on the burnt sienna so everything was of, of a same but it was interesting uh, painting on that burnt sienna and uh, I might even go if I can get back in the studio today I've been futzing with this computer all morning but uh, if I can get back in the studio today uh, that probably is going to be what I go after is just doing uh, doing that study over again and uh, it's an awesome little painting by Murphy so I really don't mind having an extra version sitting around uh, anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, and um, check out my site, uh, landscapepainter.co.nz. Also, please subscribe if you enjoy these videos. That's awesome. And uh, I will be back tomorrow with one of my own paintings, God willing. Uh, meanwhile, I want you guys to take good care and stay out of trouble. And we'll see you tomorrow.